we're going to talk about vitamins today. As we know, you know, vitamins are commonly used as OTC drugs and, you know, a go-to sort of supplements whenever we feel weak or something like that. Or whenever, you know, our body feels a bit weak, we go for multivitamin that we would be okay if we are taking those. So uh, uh, we will go uh, in detail of one by uh, one, each type of vitamins, one by one. So uh, vitamins are thought to be amines and hence the term white amines. So amines are sort of part of protein and the white uh, BIT comes from the vital. So initially it was thought that vitamins are sort of proteins that are essential for life, but needed only in only minute amount. Okay, so this word is right from this sort of scenario that originally vital for life, but was only you know, occasionally needed for you know off and on and in a small amounts. So vitamins are not a noun to be or uh, organic compounds that are not necessarily amines essential for normal growth and development. So as the you know research progressed, we came to know that vitamins are not just proteins. They can be a variety of compounds that are not necessarily amines, not just necessarily proteins. So they are very important for our normal growth and development and normal functioning of our body. So uh, some of vitamins can be synthesized in our body, while other uh, you know must be taken in the form of diet or from external sources such as supplements, etc. So they must be included in the diet because the body cannot synthesize them at all. So some of them can be synthesized by the body and most of them have to be taken with the diet. So uh, we will uh, uh, go through the vitamin deficiencies, vitamin deficiency related diseases uh, and uh, any disease that is related to the vitamin overdose uh, toxicity. So we will be going uh, in a great detail of the vitamins today. So vitamin deficiencies, uh, they can be caused by inadequate diet, uh, dietary intake. If we are not, you know, uh, taking adequate diet, like if we are too much on fast food, we are too much on, uh, you know, uh, skipping meals, or we are not, you know, taking balanced diet, so vitamin deficiencies can result in. Chronic alcoholism can also cause vitamin deficiencies. Because in chronic alcoholism, uh, the vitamin absorption is, uh, you know, uh, greatly affected. So this way, the person can go under vitamin deficiency diseases. Patients with anorexia nervosa or the second. Uh, is it reluctant to take a proper diet? So, so in an adequate absorption, for example, malabsorption, so uh, the uh, vitamins or any kind of food, it, it cannot be absorbed properly. So this can also lead to vitamin deficiency. Enhanced utilization, for example, sepsis or trauma. Uh, enhanced utilization means uh, if the person is sick or uh, uh, kind of, you know, a in severe infection, or been through severe trauma, either you know mentally or physically. So that person's body uh, is required requires more uh, more and more vitamins, more and more fuel, like in the form of food, to recover itself. So in this case, vitamin deficiency can also be seen. So incidence and prevalence of vitamin deficiency diseases today. Uh, in this slide, we are going to talk about the uh, disease burden worldwide, which is caused by the vitamin deficiency disease alone. So more than 2 billion people in the world today are estimated to be deficient in key vitamins. This is because of our dietary, you know, pattern, our uh, dietary intake, our uh, daily basis of, you know, utilization uh, patterns, our uh, uh, different races or different uh, specific areas take specific, like, uh, for example, people living near to shore or sea uh, are like more into seafood, uh, and the people living in you know uh, agricultural land they are more into wheat and rice and cereals. So 
basis on the basis of uh, the area where they live most of the people you know are uh, uh, more likely patron to uh, eat a specific kind of food so this is uh, this can be a reason of vitamin deficiency as well if you we are not taking you know a balanced diet in which you know uh, there are multivitamins there are min adequate minerals there are adequate ions we are taking so this would be a, a well balanced diet so the age difference is also observed in vitamin deficiency the highest reported prevalence among those in 35 to 44 year age gap 4.6 percent so uh so there are uh, like two main uh age groups that are targeted uh due to de vitamin deficiency disease one are the growing children uh, aging from you know neonatal period to uh, adulthood they can be uh, severely vitamin deficient because their bodies are growing quickly so they are needing more and more uh, resources to grow up so this uh, can be you know uh, uh, clearly observed in that age group as well as uh, in the older population if we go about uh, for like 40, uh, 40 or 50s or 60s onwards so in that case uh, the absorption of the nutrients also decreases due to aging or something so in that population geriatric population uh, vitamin deficiency disease can be also seen so the overall incidence of vitamin deficiency is 92.7 cases per 100,000 person year so uh, this graph shows uh, the type of vitamins and their deficiencies uh, their percentage deficit. so vitamin a is not much you know uh common to have this kind of deficiency of vitamin a but and then comes vitamin d it is slightly a bit high, at higher rate so the most common deficiencies that are seen are vitamin b2 b6 and b12 b b6 uh folate and b12 result in you know anemia decrease uh blood cells red blood cells so uh, the, uh they are commonly seen most commonly seen type of vitamin deficiency diseases so they are more uh, you know uh, pronounced in vitamin b uh, vitamin b has different types so vitamin And two and twelve are the most toxicity. It is also a thing that you know if we uh, some of the vitamins we take in, if uh, there are some other vitamins that can notably cause damage if taken in excess amount and uh, they are not you know removed from the body easily. So they cause toxicity uh, just like other you know normal uh, medicines do. So overdose toxicity in some vitamins, notably vitamin A and vitamin D, are toxic if taken in excess. And overdose uh, has recently become more common, possibly because of increased availability of these compounds uh, in o uh, OTC preparation. So, uh, in these days, all of the vitamins are available as uh, over-the-counter drugs uh, separately, as well as uh, as complete uh, as combined preparation as multivitamins. So, more and more, uh, you know, toxic city cases are reported due to this. These days, because people are not, you know, uh, aware of the uh, benefits, the exact dose of the uh, vitamins, so uh, they, you know, uh, sometimes take excess of the vitamins. So this would be cause excessive, you know, toxicity reactions or overdose toxicity in the body. Notably, vitamin A and D uh, toxicities are, you know, mostly or frequently reported, repeated, or and reported to the hospital. So now your vitamins. So what are different types of vitamins? Either they are water soluble or fat soluble. We are gonna talk about each of them one by one. So uh, basically, if we categorize vitamins in uh, on the basis of solubility, solubility, uh, they are what water soluble and then fat soluble. And what uh, in fat soluble vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K are included. And while the water soluble vitamins are uh, what are different types of vitamin B and vitamin C and folate. So uh, uh, these are the functions of the vitamins uh, that they do in our body. So vitamin A, if a person is vitamin A deficient, 
they can have uh, you know vision disturbances or they might have night blindness as well uh, vitamin d is very important for bone classification uh, sorry calcification and cal uh, calcium homeostasis bone calcification means uh, the you know strengthening of the bones uh, and the you know uh, whole the material the bones are made up of uh, it is mainly derived by the vitamin d which regulates the amount of calcium and other ions in the body so the uh, bones have adequate you know calcium and they have adequate cement to to be strong enough so vitamin d is uh, acts as antioxidant in the body uh, it is very important to get rid of the toxins in the body they are produced as a, a mechanism of our body you know a wear and tear mechanism so vitamin k is very important for a healthy and normal clotting factors uh, which are important for you know a, a normal uh, bleeding and clotting time if a person bleeds uh, if he is vitamin d, uh, vitamin k deficient his uh, clotting factors are impaired and uh, the bleeding he or she may be you know uh, may have severe bleeding because of the altered or malfunctioned clotting factors in case of vitamin k deficiency so uh, there is increased risk of bleeding in that person uh, now we come to the water soluble vitamin there are folate cobalamin vitamin c and there are uh, metabolic vitamins or type of uh, b1 b2 b3 b5 b6 and b7 so each of the types and the vitamins uh, uh, water soluble vitamin and that each of type of vitamin b uh, they are involved in different functions uh, this section is particularly involved in metabolic functions meanwhile these two are mainly involved in the blood or neuro relevant functioning meanwhile the vitamin c acts as antioxidant and collagen synthesis this vitamin is very important for you know uh, normal collagen synthesis and this Uh, vitamin also keeps our skin healthy and young. Uh, we are gonna talk about fat soluble vitamins in detail one by one. So there are four mainly fat soluble vitamins: vitamin A, then vitamin D, then vitamin E and K. So as I already said, the uh, vitamin A is very important for the vision, reproduction, health, bone health, immune system, and the skin. Vitamin D strengthens bones, calcium absorption. and uh, it is important for the immune system uh, vitamin e is important for the you know immune system as well it is it acts as antioxidant and it flushes toxins out of the body vitamin k is important for the bone health and blood clotting uh, these images shows the different sources of the vitamin uh, we can take in the form of diet vitamin a uh, you know it's it's mostly uh, uh can be sourced from the green vegetables carrots beetroot etc vitamin d uh, can be obtained from the uh, beef or you know uh, uh, dietary products but uh, vitamin e can be obtained from the almond uh, apricots and certain type of fruits vitamin e is also present in uh, less quantity in citrus fruits as well vitamin k is found in broccoli and other green vegetables as well So, fat soluble vitamins are named because they are soluble in organic solvents and absorbed and transported in a manner similar to that of fat. So, we categorize uh, these vitamins as fat soluble because they are, you know, digested, absorbed, and transported uh, just like we, uh, uh, the body, uh, absorbs and transports the fats in our body. So, they are categorized as fat soluble vitamins. Uh, they are also soluble in organic solvents as well. so each of these has more than one active chemical form uh, like uh, when we eat a certain vitamin or in the form of food or supplement that vitamin goes uh, you know uh, under certain changes chemical changes they can be uh, like uh, they can go from uh, inactive form to active form so they can have a variety of active forms as well moving to the next vitamin a it is also called retinol it derives from retina uh, which is a part of eye so its second name is retinol vitamin a sources are precursors of vitamin a are found in yellow and green parts of plants vitamin a is stored in animal tissues liver and it's also present in milk products and eggs so these are main sources of vitamin a basically uh, vitamin a deficiency is not usually seen 
because uh, it is uh, adequately stored in the liver and uh, liver and other uh, body tissues as well so effects of vitamin a deficiency uh, can lead to night blindness or poor vision in dim light the conjunctiva uh, which is the if we you know take our lid a little bit down the red part is called conjunctiva and the cornea becomes dry and wrinkled uh, if uh, the person is vitamin a deficient his eyes run dry and uh, can be you know uh, the interior part of the eye can become easily wrinkled and it become dry and can be severely itchy and painful so poor bone growth in skull leads to cranial nerve compressions uh, in children or growing uh, age group vitamin a deficiency can also lead to a reduced growth of bones so it will lead to uh, cranial nerve compression so uh, there are signs of vitamin a deficiency which are dry skin dry eyes night blindness infertility and trouble conceiving poor bone healing acne breakout delayed growth throat and chest infections so uh, vitamin a deficiency can be manifested in these of in different forms but most commonly it is uh, you know uh, reported as dry eyes and night blindness so the treatment of deficiency is on the basis of clinical criteria very low plasma vitamin a concentration to really confirm deficiency so uh, it can be treated with retinal palmitate it is a drug that is used to treat the acute deficiency of vitamin a high dose of vitamin a should be uh, given advance in lesions night blindness treatment so uh, this uh, line is kind of complex so treatment is basically uh, uh, for, given for the acute deficiency of vitamin a that leads to a variety of diseases such as skin lesion night blindness and uh, you know uh, retina is a part of eye that uh, with the help of that we can uh, we are able to see so uh, in case of these diseases vitamin a in the form of retinal palmitate uh, can be given in high doses to you know completely uh, to quickly uh, treat the diseases because if we prolong this or if we do not treat in time this may lead to a permanent you know disability or permanent uh, loss of vision so vitamin d is also called uh, calciferol it is one of the uh, tractable soluble vitamins as well sources are oily fish including salmon egg yolk red meat and sun so uh, speaking of sun uh, our body uh, under the exposure of adequate sunlight Uh, produces vitamin D uh, naturally. Uh, in the previous lecture, I already discussed about uh, the exposure to sunlight and its benefit in vitamin D synthesis. So the effects of vitamin D, D deficiency results in depression or feeling of sadness, hair loss, muscle weakness, loss of appetite. So uh, in certain areas where the winters are severe and you know uh, the sun doesn't come out like for months, so in, in those areas if they do not uh, if the people do not take adequate vitamin d in the either in the form of supplement or in the form of diet they may uh, they may have like these sort of uh, symptoms they may have severe depressive episode they might have muscle weakness uh, they you know uh, uh, they are mostly uh, immune fatigue or tired uh, and you know this Uh, vitamin D deficiency is mainly seen in winters when the sun goes like down for months or in severe winters if there is not adequate exposure to sunlight. Uh, symptoms of serious vitamin D deficiency are uh, sleep changes, low mood, back pain, loss of appetite, fatigue, pale skin and dark circles, infections, frequent cough and cold, muscle strength is uh, decreased, weak and ach uh, aching bones. so these are vitamin d deficiency diseases that can be caused due to vitamin d deficiency uh, either due to uh, decreased exposure to sunlight or decreased uh, uh, vitamin d intake uh, either in the form of food or supplement so oral supplementation is 800 to 1000 uh, international units per day of vitamin d is safe for most of people and can ensure levels of vitamin d are right within the optimal range so this is a normal recommendatory dietary allowed uh, uh uh 
uh, supplement. Uh, this is the uh, recommended. Uh, sorry, I have to double check this. So, 800 to 1000 international units are dietary allowed. You know, the dose of the vitamin D is safe. That's, uh, yes, that's uh, correct. So, most of the people, uh, this is not usually needed in uh, summers, but in winters, people have to take uh, like oral supplements or in the form of injections or in the form of excessive, you know, diet that contain vitamin D. So, uh, this is the normal uh, dose or, you know, uh, a safe dose. That can be taken uh, either by mouth or by injection, uh, recommended by healthcare practitioners. So, magnesium also helps in activating vitamin D in the body. Uh, so, this is a, another iron that we take from the diet, and this helps in uh, activating the vitamin D in our body. So, uh, we talked about the vitamin, uh, the fat soluble vitamins that are vitamin A, vitamin K, and vitamin D. So next comes the vitamin E. Uh, it is also called alpha tocopherol. This is a sort of scientific name. Vitamin E acts as antioxidant, means they flush toxins out of the body, which are produced either a uh, result of our uh, wear and tear in our body. Going on. So the best source of uh, vitamin C, uh, vitamin E, include wheat, jam oil, sunflower seeds, almonds, peanuts, and pumpkin. So these are you know routine uh, sources uh, that we can uh, from we can obtain vitamin E. Effects of vitamin E deficiency include nerve and muscle damage, loss of body movement control, and muscle weakness. And uh, uh, you know uh, uh, one of the uh, another effect of vitamin E deficiency is also a build up of toxins uh, that you know uh, are easily flushed who are taking an adequate amount of vitamins. So, not flush of the body, they can either uh, you know, uh, manifest as skin diseases or in other form of diseases as well. So, uh, these are different signs and symptoms that can result due to vitamin E deficiencies. Uh, vision problems can also be caused by vitamin E deficiency. We can immune system difficulty numbness and tingling muscle So these are uh, caused by vitamin D e as well. But adequate history uh, for uh, to examine the patient very carefully to rule out which exact vitamin is missing from the body. So uh, we have to take that exact supplement uh, to overcome the deficiency disease. So the treatment of vitamin E is intake of leafy vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, vegetable oil, and fortified cereals. Uh, there is no such as such medicine for these kind of deficiencies. To cover any vitamin deficiency, we have to give that vitamin either in food or either in the form of a supplement. So adults need 15 mg of the vitamin E per day. Uh, I, they can take it uh, in the form of a uh, balanced diet. So these are the sources or they can take in the form of supplement. So supplements are also used for treatment of disease related deficiency. Some people, you know, take supplements to uh, to maintain a normal level of vitamins in their body. And in case of diseases, supplements are also helpful and in that case, they are used as medicine. So, vitamin K is needed for the synthesis of prothrombin coagulation factors. Prothrombin and coagulation factors are part of blood that help in our uh, blood clot. If there is any sort of bleeding or trauma, uh, or uh, you know any uh, due to any cause, if there is uh, bleeding happening from our body, so vitamin K is important. Uh, that prothrombin and coagulation factors are adequately synthesized and it helps to stop the uh, blood from, you know, if there's bleeding, it, uh, you, you know, if it, after some time, it, you know, coagulates itself or bleeding stops. So it is very important to, uh, you know, uh, take balance side to ensure that vitamin K is adequately being taken 
if the beta vitamin K is being taken, uh, there is adequate synthesis of thrombin and circulation factor. So this is this, this is a whole series of events go on uh, if we are taking uh, adequate diet. So the sources of vitamin K include uh, cod liver oil, salmon, tuna fish, beef liver, and orange juice fortified with vitamin K. These all are the sources that we can take vitamin from. So effect of vitamin K deficiency is not having enough vitamin K in body makes you more likely to bleed. Uh, there is high tendency that that person can bleed heavily uh, either due to a cut or trauma. You may bruise, uh, bruise more easily or it may, it may be more difficult to stop bleeding after injury or surgery. It can also make your period heavier. So this was all about vitamin K. We uh, talked about vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. These all are vitamin uh, fat soluble vitamins. So uh, these are some uh, vitamin K deficiency symptoms. There is high risk of osteoporosis, means uh, weakening of bones, easy bruising, hemorrhaging means uh, more bleeding, uncontrolled bleeding if there is a cut or if there is trauma or surgery. So these are common symptoms that a person can, you know. Uh, uh, face if uh, vitamin K is missing from their body or diet. So the treatment is initial strict supplementation for eight weeks with vitamin D3, either six thousand international units daily or fifty thousand international units weekly can be considered as a treatment for vitamin K deficiency. So these are uh, you know different regimens that either you have to take six thousand international units daily or fifty thousand international units weekly. Uh, for eight weeks initially to overcome the deficiency. So next we're going to talk about water soluble vitamins. Uh, they, uh, they can dissolve in water is always a component of coenzymes or auxiliaries are known as water soluble vitamins. These are more abundant than uh, the uh, fat soluble vitamins and uh, most of them should, uh, should be taken from the our, our environment either in the form of diet or in the form of supplement. So we are going to talk about the vitamin B uh, and its subtype B1. It is also called thiamine. Sources, uh, humans cannot synthesize thiamine. It is found mainly in dietary components. Wheat germ, oatmeal, yeast are particularly rich sources of thiamine. So if a person is deficient of vitamin B1, it is usually due to ethanol intake with high carbohydrate, but poor vitamin intake, although it can also be seen in intensive care patients with high carbohydrate intake. So uh, vitamin B1 deficiency is due to high alcohol intake with high carbohydrates, uh, and it can also be uh, seen in you know poor vitamin intake and as well as in ICU patients where you know uh, that uh, that patients are usually on parenteral nutrition uh, through IVs uh, in the form of glucose or uh, other dextrose solution. So in this case, B1 uh, deficiency is also seen. So the deficiency of famine causes beriberi. It is a type of disease, anorexia, cardiac arrhythmias, and neurological lesion. These all are different type of diseases that are seen due to deficiency of vitamin B1. Next is vitamin B2, which is also called riboflavin. You don't have to, you know, remember these uh, scientific names. You just have to, you know, remember at least uh, this vitamin B and their sources uh, and the uh, deficiency disease related to them. So the riboflavin is also found in large amounts in yeast and germinating plants such as peas and beans and in smaller amounts in fish, poultry, and meat. So these are most common sources of the vitamin B. Clinical effects of vitamin uh, B deficiency are, uh, they include poor intake, malabsorption and alcoholism. Riboflavin deficiency causes uh, rough, pale skin, angular stomatitis, swollen, tender, and red thumb. So these are some clinical terms. Uh, I would make it simple for you. Uh, Mainly, vitamin B2 deficiency is either due to reduced intake or either due to uh, malabsorption. Uh, if vitamin is not being absorbed or not, it is uh, uh, due to faulty absorption. 
due to heavy alcohol intake and its deficiency causes rough scaly skin angular stomatitis it is a you know a scientific term in which means there is you know swelling or inflammation of the mouth or uh, we have you know cracks from our angles of the mouth swollen tender and dry tongue in this uh, deficiency the patient's tongue would be red and swollen third one is niacin or also called nicotinamide it is also being frequently used in the form of uh, uh, you know serums as well uh, to treat certain skin conditions so its sources uh, uh, it can be formed in the body from nicotinic acid both substances are plentiful in animal and plant food some nicotinic acid can be synthesized in humans from tryptophan it is amino acid which we take from proteins and protein uh, can be sourced from any form of meat either chicken or red meat or beef so clinical effects of nicotinamide deficiency are dementia with delusion that patients are more prone to the secretory diseases dermatitis is sunburn like erythema or sunburn like uh, skin disease the patient can have diarrhea can have stomatitis can have vaginitis as well so this Disease, uh, vitamin deficiency manifests in the form of these diseases. Next, we are going to talk about B6. Pyridoxine. It is also a very important uh, vitamin that is involved uh, uh, mostly like in aging and uh, in diabetic patients as well. It manifests uh, in deficiency manifests as uh, roughening of skin. peripheral neuropathy and sore tongue so a uh, period of skin period gets also uh, called period of skin is aldehyde and amine are widely distributed in food so it uh, you know uh, in simple if i would say they exist as in the uh, a sort of protein and sort of carbohydrate so these sources are widely distributed in food and its deficiency can cause peripheral neuropathy One com most common disease is in diabetic as well as like uh, it's a, a motivating woman who are going in menopause. So these uh, diseases are related to deficiency of vitamin B6. Next is what uh, vitamin B and folate deficiency. It is mainly manifested as anemia in uh, most of the patients. Its sources include dark green leafy vegetables, brown rice, pulses, and beans. nuts and seeds and white and red meat so uh, if we you know talk about the sources of the vitamins most of them most of them are you know available in our uh, routine diet like if we take balanced diet that we uh, we can easily overcome a vitamin deficiency like if we are taking adequate meat we are taking adequate vegetables we are taking adequate cereals and pulses so uh, that person can never have uh, vitamin deficiency only if uh, he or she can have if there is some sort of malabsorption so the deficiency of folate and vitamin b uh, 12 are essential for normal maturation of the astrocytes the uh, deficiency of either causes macrocytosis and or megaloblastic anemia uh, it is a sort of anemia in which blood cells red blood cells are kind of uh, bigger than their normal size but the hemoglobin which is an essential pigment uh, for them is like in reduced amount so uh, in you know uh, layman term i would say uh, there is reduced red blood cells or adequate oxygen transport to the body and it this condition is medically called as anemia next one is vitamin c or ascorbate it is a vitamin uh, it is a water soluble vitamin and you may all uh, are aware of that that vitamin c is majorly and majorly involved in uh, keeping the skin fresh and young and it is uh, mainly involved in the collagen synthesis it is also uh, abundantly found in uh, you know green chilies as well it is added to the other food as preservative it can also be synthesized by the human so it must be taken uh, in the form of diet and vegetables 
so detection more commonly occurred in albedo occur in iron overload so this would then if we speak of uh, the most like we are reduced uh, wound healing or wound healing deficiency of bone, uh, bone 